Hello, my divinities. Welcome, welcome. Um, I want to apologize. Yesterday, I had unexpected. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Several unexpected events take place, and I didn't finish dealing with them until late last night. So I missed yesterday's work, and I'm so sorry about that. But if it makes you feel any better, um, it was not because I was out lounging about, <laughs> okay? It was a difficult day, but here we are, back again. So let's see. By the way, before we start, I wanna say thank you to everybody who's taken the time to subscribe, those of you who take the time to comment, to react to the videos or reels, those of you who share, all of that really makes a difference for me and it lets me know that you are true hardcore supporters and i want to say thank you because without you i would not be able to live my dream so <laughs> thank you all right let's get started what is today's collective message okay so we start with number 10 what's today's collective message i've got number 49 and number 25 okay let's read all right start with number 25 this one is jang noksu sweetness that leads to destruction Ooh. jang noksu is the ninth concubine of yung sangun famous as a tyrant when she was young she married prince jean's family servant or Jiang's, whatever, family servant gave birth to a son. After that, she learned singing and dancing and became a Kisang. Although she was not a great beauty, she was seen as a 16-year-old girl in her 30s, had outstanding dancing and singing skills, and had excellent ability to curry favor with Yong Sangun. Despite her status as a low class, Jiang Noksu became the king's wife and wielded supreme power. Even though she lived in the palace, she demolished the private houses to build her new house. And there was also a Kisang who was beheaded for accidentally stepping on Zhang Noksu's skirt. After the success of King Jung Jong's rebellion, Yong Sangung was deposed and Zhang Noksu was captured by the rebels and sentenced to decapitation. It is said that countless people threw stones and hurled abuse at her beheaded body. Wow. It is a typical case of putting a most powerful man's heart in her hands and then squandering his strength and wealth. Her end cannot be good. As if to compensate for her past, this woman enjoyed showing off her wealth and lived by taking advantage of the man. Not her own efforts ended, ended up with a bitter finish. A short-sighted person who does not think about the future, but only living for the desires of the present. Detail, Yong Sangun relied on Zhang Noksu, who was older than him, as he could not lessen the, le he could not lessen the sadness of losing his mother when he was young. His dependence became so severe that he started the tyranny. Wow. Talk about codependence leading to really dark shit. Okay. Let's look at number 10. Mandok. The true value of life. Mandok was a commoner by birth, but she worked as a government kisang in Jeju after being orphaned at an early age. She was later returned to commoner by a government official and established a peddler's inn and engaged in commerce. She sold tangerines, seaweed, and horsehair, which, which were specialties of Jeju Island, in exchange for clothes and accessories on the land and became rich. When a severe famine continued on Jeju Island, hundreds of people died because of starvation. A transport ship carrying 20,000 seam, oh, seom of rice sent from the land sank, and Mandok released all her assets and bought a lot of rice and donate the, donated them to the government office. In praise of her, King Jongjo granted a special honorary office to Mandok, who was a commoner and a woman, and allowed her to travel to Mount Gunggang, which was her wish, despite the Jeju people's prohibition of moving at that time. We can see the true spirit of noblesse oblige in Mandok's good deeds. If a woman has a grand and great dream in her mind, love with a man may be just trivial for her. Each person has a different life plan. Unlike other women's submissive lives in the time, she was a great woman who pioneered her own destiny. A person of great aspiration lives corresponding life. A detail, Mandok was a person who made her own fortune and was granted an audience with King Jongjo. This was an unprecedented case as a woman at the time. Okay. 
Hey, so far these two women are totally different. Let's see where this card lands. Number 49. This is Gumganga, Importance of Knowing One's Place. Gumganga became a concubine of Osung, the former head of Jungchuon, after his wife died and took charge of all the family affairs. At the time of marriage, Osung was already 80 years old, so Gumganga secretly shared love with a family servant. Oh, okay. Later, Osung noticed the situation and seared the servant's feet and beat him to death in a rage. Saimun Sain Bu, the, minister, the Ministry of Justice of Joseon, heard about the incident and interrogated them. As a punishment, the government sentenced Gumganga stick and made her, what? The government sentenced, okay, I don't know what that means. They, that's a typo. And made her a maid servant of the gov government of Gyeongsong and Oh Sung, who punished the servant excessively, also took the penalty. Gumganga who was able to spend the rest of her life comfortably, regarded the relaxed environment given to her for granted and lived neglectfully rather than being grateful, fell back into a tough lower class. When given a good environment, which is above one's place, his or her true nature will be revealed. Some try to be the proper person for the environment and change in a good way, but others act by their hidden nature and kick their luck. So know yourself. Detail. Even if a high-class gentry killed a servant, he did not receive severe punishment. There was a status system which was higher than the human's rights. Okay, so this is interesting because today's story is basically saying, which one are you going to be? One person used their wealth to help, to assist, to... Uh, and this also shows a person who, regardless of gender, is independent. Love isn't the priority in their life. They want to do more for humanity and these this one is like a deciding point this one over here is she had the favor of used her her seductive charms right to create codependency with someone and then turn them into a tyrant so that they could live however they wanted but that of course led to consequences because it's karma you can't do that type of thing without expecting karma so i'm actually going to put these over here let's see how this plays out because it feels like a choice is what it feels like let's see let's look at today's collective message how does this affect today's collective message we start with the page of swords the high priestess the nine of swords The Eight of Wands. The Ten of Swords. Ooh. Okay. Seven of Cups. The Empress. The Two of Swords. Six of Cups. Hmm. This is Four of Wands, Strength Card, the Shaman, which is the Magician, and the Hanged Man. I feel like someone is about to be in a very powerful position. A divine feminine because showing up with Empress and High Priestess energy. And then we've got the Strength card here, which is, oh, here it is, <laughs> which is um, the Empress again, but this time her Strength side. So a divine feminine is about to be connected to a very powerful person. And these Oracle cards are here because it's basically asking, what type of person are you going to turn into when you are given power? What type of legacy do you leave behind? Do you leave behind the legacy of someone who abuses their authority? 
and abuses their privilege, abuses their status? Or are you going to be somebody who acknowledges that having status and privilege is exactly what it's called, a privilege, and you should use that to help others? What type of person are you going to be? Because that's, that's what this energy is giving off. Four of Wands. Now, it's not so much talking about who is coming towards you. It's just talking about what is coming towards you. A relationship. But a relationship that is so powerful, it's going to take strength for you to not be a bully. For you to not take advantage of how high you are. Clarify Four of Wands. Oh, actually, let's look at the rest of the spread real quick. Page of Swords. With the Nine of Swords. With the High Priestess energy, it's telling us Divine Feminine is already feeling something headed her way. But with the Eight of Wands, <laughs> Ten of Swords, Seven of Cups. Surprisingly, what she may not realize is that it's not a bad thing. Um, I feel like her intuition is telling her that there's a big, massive change headed her way. She just doesn't know what this change consists of. And she's imagining a lot of bad scenarios because the Nine of Swords is there. But in reality, I think it's a very positive change. So it's coming towards her and it's like she can feel the energy headed her way, but she's imagining it like, like a weapon. She's imagining worst case scenario, but it's not. I think that she may be nervous because she senses an ending. And I'm saying she because it's Divine Feminine doesn't have to be. Um, the Divine Feminine is sensing that something is going to end soon, and it will. Her current life is about to end. All three of these were talking about people that came from humble beginnings. They were all songs who came from humble beginnings. They, you know, because some songs were families that were, you know, used to be noble and their family fell and they had to go into that type of work. These all three were people who had humble beginnings. With the two of swords, she may not, she may not see exactly how this is going to play out. But she's going to put be put in a position of authority. She's going to be put in a position of power. The Six of Cups, I feel like she's about to encounter a soulmate who's going to put her in a position of power. And what she does with that defines her. Clarify Four of Wands. Because remember, I've told you guys before, money is not... A physical thing when people say oh money is evil money is this well money does not have sentience money is an energy that's like saying oxygen is evil or you know gravity is evil because people jump in and get kills them that's not it's not a sentient thing it's a living force but it's not sentient so money is an amplifier whatever we are money amplifies it power amplifies it so this divine feminine is about to be amplified who she is will will come to the surface clarify four of wands for better or for worse we're about to find out if she's a tyrant or if she's a humanitarian king of wands knight of ooh, ooh, king of wands knight of wands and the emperor well, with the Eight of Cups, the Harvard High Priestess. Okay, so, ooh, the devil. All right. <laughs> so this tells me a couple of things, possibly. On one hand, it could be that the High Priestess is walking away from a marriage that was really toxic. A relationship that was really toxic. Um, or she's walking away from something that was very codependent, very controlling, so that she can go towards a marriage. But that would have been more accurate if the Hierophant came out this side, not here. This is what she's walking away from. 
So this could be an organization. It could be a lot of, multi, uh, you know, multiple things. But overall, or it could be that the emperor's walking away from that for her. Either way, here we go. This is this is who's coming towards her. I told you, somebody powerful, somebody that only has eyes for her. In this case, this was a this was a woman of low birth who had the ear and heart of a king, who she turned into a tyrant so that she could do as she wanted. In this one. It's a woman who was allowed to take over the you know decisions and, and power of the home, and then she cheated on him. She had a lover right under her husband's nose. And of course, that went to shit, just like this one went to shit. And this one, this is somebody who doesn't prioritize love, but who uses her resources to help. So it could be... This could tell us a couple of things. It could say that maybe in this connection there's not a lot of passion between herself and this emperor on his side there is and that could be the problem like since for the feminine love is not her primary goal or if that's you know a possibility she can do very easily without the emperor whereas he maybe cannot especially in this one there was an air of codependency so there's a possibility that if these two are not careful the Especially for the emperor, the, the connection is so enticing, so powerful for him. That's why it may be a test for the empress, because a powerful person will be at her beck and call, basically. How she exerts power and influence over this person says a lot about who she is. Is she going to use it? To just belittle, humiliate, and crush other people? Or is she going to use it to help? To, to help, help humanity? Clarify Page of Swords. Let's see. Clarify Page of Swords. Ooh. Six of Cups. Huh. This may be somebody she already knows. Clarify Page of Swords. Eight of Swords and the Fool. The Nine of Swords, the Page, the Chariot. The anxiety is just so strong. It's showing up here, here, and here. So it could be with the Six of Cups, that this could be somebody this Empress already knows. Or it could be that when these two meet, there is such a feeling of, I know you. How do I know you? Most likely a spiritual connection, past life connection. On the Empress's side, though, she shows up not wanting to make a move. Possibly afraid of taking a leap of faith. But then there's curiosity. There's this curiosity about, hmm, how would it work? I do want to mention, though, that there might be an age difference. In this one, she was with someone who was 80 years old. In this one, she was with someone who was, I believe, younger. So she was like, a, she, okay, this could go either way. This could be a powerful person who's really young and she will be like a mother figure to them. But, you know, mother, lover, <laughs> sorry, sorry, but that's, or this is someone older and she may feel comparatively young compared to them. One of the two. Um, and that may be why she's like, mm, not sure, but there's a curiosity. Page of Swords indicates I don't think she'll be able to get it off, get this person off their mind. So she might decide to just go with it. We do have a major arcana saying she will eventually just take a leap of faith. But for a minute, there's a lot of hesitation. Clarify High Priestess. Clarify High Priestess. 
Look, <laughs> Empress, clarify High Priestess. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So we get the Empress, the Justice card, Seven of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, and the Seven of Swords. Ooh, Three of Swords. What the? Oh, oh, I see. So, whoever the Empress has dealt with in the past, there has been a lot of deception. There's been a lot of heartbreak. And so by the time she gets to this emperor, she's not fully herself yet. Um, at her best is what I'm trying to say. That's why she's still anxious. She's still the wounded warrior from having dealt with whoever she had been dealing with in the past. That being said, she is still showing up as a divine feminine. Um, with the justice card here, It means that she's going to be impartial. She's going to be, I think that she's going to be more objective. So when she meets this emperor, she, she may recognize, because I'm telling you, there's a six of cups at the beginning and at the end, there's a feeling of recognition. And although she's scared because of what she's been going through, she's going to be objective, impartial, weigh out the pros and cons before she decides, should I invest in this person? Eight of Pentacles. Now, I see this person charging towards her like mine. So this person may be a little possessive. They're very passionate about her. King of Wands, Knight of Wands, they are very passionate about her. So on one hand, it may indicate that she's weighing out whether she should invest in them or not, but they are definitely going to invest in her. And them investing in her will lead to her like accepting the investment, accepting their interest, accepting their energy. Careful though, because in this one, she might not be as passionate about this person, but if she deceives this person or abuses her power over this person, it's not gonna end well, because that's how karmic laws work. You cannot plant tomatoes and expect strawberries. That's just not gonna happen. Clarify none of sorts. Oh, all reversals. Wonderful. <laughs> Three of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Hierophant reversed, High Priestess reversed. Mm. Okay, let's see, hold on. What's at the bottom? Seven of Cups, Three of Pentacles. Told you she just finished dealing with a lover that she believed had a strong foundation, and then she's realizing no, it was an illusion, it wasn't what she thought it was. And so now, part of the fear is because she was so sure that the previous connection had a future, and now she's realizing it does not have a future, it is not stable, it is not leading to marriage or anything stable that she thought the high priestess reversed. She's even doubting her intuition. She's doubting, she's doubting herself basically. But what she may not want to think about is the fact that her intuition was never the problem. It was her listening to her intuition that was the problem. When you go into two of swords mode or eight of swords mode and you put the blindfold over your eyes and you're like, no, 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 I don't know, I don't know. Your intuition is already telling you. You have the warning signs very present. People are not stupid. You choose to move forward regardless of what your intuition is telling you. That's different. Your intuition was never at fault. You just didn't want to listen to it. But now that they finished dealing with whatever issue they were dealing with. Now this empress is like, oh, maybe my intuition is faulty. Maybe, maybe this, maybe that. It was never none of that. The problem was never herself. It was listening to herself. Clarify eight of wands. Queen of swords. Our intuition is so sharp. And remember, our intuition comes from two different places. It comes from your gut and it comes from your third eye. 
from your sacral and your third eye. So that's the clash between what people call your head and your heart. You may desire sacral chakra. You may desire something, but your own gut will warn you whether you should desire that or not. And your head will clarify that further. If you allow it, if you allow yourself to stay impartial, clarify eight of wands. When you, when you choose the desire over common sense, over what your intuition is trying to tell you, you can't blame your intuition for that. You just didn't want to listen. Clarify eight of wands. Clarify eight of wands. Fortune, Page of Swords, the Three of Cups, Five of Swords. Okay, so this this is like a follow up of today's collective story. It was giving us choices that the Empress had, and now it's showing us more her perspective than their perspective. Um, I do see someone from the past determined against all odds to reconcile, to restore a connection. Now, this collective will only fit with the divine feminines who have decided to walk away from the past, because that's what I'm seeing here. When the message from the past shows up, this, the divine feminines that resonate with this collective will put up boundaries will say enough. I'm curious about the future, not the past. I'm facing this way, not that way. It's time to move on. I'm curious about this new person. Maybe right now they're just friends or they don't know. Right now they're single and they're just enjoying themselves, but they're putting an end to the past. They don't want to be in this state of anxiety and worry anymore. And the longer they hold on to that connection, the more that anxiety takes over because they're dealing with someone who's probably going to send mixed signals, who's not sure, who keeps taking back what they said, who keeps giving ambiguous, you know, uh, promises or words. Let's see. Clarify Ten of Swords. Look at that. Seven of Swords. Four of Wands. The Chariot. I'm hearing, um, there's a song Camila Cabello sings. Uh, something about a liar. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Camila. Camila Cabello. I don't know why I'm saying it like I'm a white girl. Cabello. It says, I don't care if you're here or if you're not alone. I don't care. It's, I don't care. It's been too long. It's kind of like we didn't happen. The way that your lips move, the way you whisper, whisper slow. I don't care. It's as good as gone. I said, I won't lose control. I don't want it. I said, I won't get too close, but I can't stop it. And it says, oh no, there you go, making me a liar. Got me begging you for more. Oh no, there I go, starting up a fire. Oh no, there you go, making, you're making me a liar. I kind of like it though. Oh no, there I go, starting up a fire. You're watching, I feel it. You know I shouldn't stare. I picture your hands on me. I think I want to let it happen. But what if you kiss me? And what if I like it? And no one sees it. And then again the chorus and so basically it's the story of she's the liar <laughs> in this case she's the one that keeps going back for more even though she keeps telling herself she won't so that's the question here Like I said, in this case, this is a divine feminine who doesn't want to be a liar anymore. She wants to stop lying. All the times that she said, I'm done, I'm not going back, I'm over it. 
This time she wants it to be real. She wants, she's like, I have to be wiser than this. I'm dealing with someone who makes me a liar because they're the same. And right now we're on the same frequency. I don't want to be on the same frequency as someone who's a liar because then I turn into a liar. I promise myself I'm not going back. I promise myself I'm not talking to him. I promise myself I won't sleep with him or interact with him. And there I go. So four of wands, that connection has to end. And it's like the divine feminine has reached some sort of pivotal point in her life because this is a milestone. She feels like this is a huge accomplishment. Walking away from this is a huge accomplishment, which means that she, maybe once upon a time, she thought she would never would be able to. And doing so now is making her like, wow, okay, I'm growing in wisdom. Look, she's so proud of, yes. She's so proud of herself because walking away, it's like um, being stuck in this glob of goo it takes effort to walk away, but the further away she gets, the thinner the glue gets. So it's just what she's going to have to do. Clarify Seven of Cups. Clarify Seven of Cups. Well, they came out sideways, but still Knight of Swords and the Hanged Man. Clarify Seven of Cups. Oh, there it goes. Oh, well, whoever you're dealing with in the past, they're going to tell you that you're breaking their heart, that you used to heal them. They're going to communicate that they want to restore the connection. Of course, there's still night and you have an emperor coming towards you, but this person does not think that this is over. They're willing to make sacrifices for you. They're they're like, yeah, let's let's restore our connection, which is still just a concept, an ideal. It's not even solid. But they're gonna swear up and down that you're breaking their heart if you run off with someone else. Clarify the Empress. Ooh. Five of Pentacles, clarify the Empress. King of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. See, in the other collective story, I'm telling you, this Knight of Swords showed up as the Page of Pentacles. This is someone that you were meant to teach, and they were meant to teach you lessons. And this connection is over. If you are truly an Empress, you want someone who can match you. And this person cannot match you. So... Five of Pentacles reversed. If you're tired of feeling abandoned, like you're always waiting for this person, like you're always alone, if you're tired of being without your emperor, let go. Because a king of cups is here. And remember, the emperor is all the kings in one. This is someone who's truly emotionally available. They're loving, they're kind, they're compassionate, and they will create a strong foundation with you which is what you thought you had with this other person, but you don't. Clarify Two of Swords. Seven of Wands, Nine of Wands. Clarify Two of Swords. Mm, what to do, what to do. Six of Pentacles. With the Six of Swords, the Ace of Swords, and the King of Swords. Yeah, like I said, those who resonate with this reading will be the Empresses that decide to move forward. They decide to pair up with an Emperor and leave behind the Knight of Swords. They realize their life is going to be a lot better if they just move forward. They receive divine, like something like this, divine messages letting them know where true victory and success lies with the King. With someone who embodies the King of Swords. So what she's going to have to work through that she's struggling with is setting boundaries. Because the person that is the servant to somebody like an emperor might be the person that's like, hey, you know what? You can be with the emperor. 
I'm a knight. You can have me on the side. Better not. Remember, if you betray this emperor, you will not end up in a good place. Setting boundaries is your biggest protection. Invest in that. Because some of you want to do this thing of like, well, I'll go move with the emperor, but I want this one as a friend. Don't do it. Don't do it. That means that you would be in denial that you know what this other person wants. Clarify Six of Cups. And if you're attracted to them, that's even worse. Clarify Six of Cups. Yep. Look at this. You keep dealing with someone who comes up as King of Wands, King of Cups, King of Swords, and King of Pentacles. This is an emperor. This is somebody who's single and who wants to take you off the market. Someone who sees you as their sun, their stars, their everything. What are you going to do with this? Are you going to abuse the connection? Are you going to reject the connection? Because you've got decisions to make. The Page of Cups is what you were dealing with before. Now you're dealing with an emperor. Are you going to choose the old connection or are you going to choose the better connection? It's up to you. But like I said, your actions will tell us who you are. Okay? <laughs> That's what I got for you guys. I hope that this gave you some clarity, some guidance, if not for yourself or the future. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.